Uh, yeah, I don't want to take up all this time, but I want to just ask, do you think that Flagrant 2 blew up in a way because on Brilliant Idiots, Charlemagne kind of almost got canceled and Andrew had to kind of reserve himself, and then he's like, fuck it, let's go on Flagrant 2 and go hard. And then you guys were saying the wild stuff that weren't other people weren't able to say on well, Brilliant Idiots. You get those comments every once in a while, I guess, but I think Andrew blew up and we did Rogan, and I think we we talked about the branding of it and making it Andrew Schultz's Flagrant 2. And I at first, my ego was a little resistant, mm. and then he and I had a talk where he was like, dude, I would never do some fucking... And I was just like, dude, I just feel a little, like... You know, whatever, because uh, well, I don't know. We talked it out, and then I he saw my point of view, and I completely saw his point of view. And it was the best decision I made to swallow my ego because it made me way more money. I think the Rogan fans saw Andrew Schultz's flagrant truth, and they're like, oh, let's go to that, as opposed to Brilliant. Gotcha. And I think two comedians are just going to have fun with topics. Also, you're really loyal, as you were saying, that you kind of had the idea in a way, and you kind of like shelved it a little bit and let Andrew get some steam with Brilliant Idiots and yeah, come back to him. Yeah, and like yeah. You guys have a good friendship. I want to do years. a podcast with Andrew forever, and then when he did one with Charlemagne, I was like, this is, I said to him, this is the first time I've ever been jealous of you. And I didn't say why. The why is because I was like, dude, I want us to do a podcast together, but you got to do a podcast with Charlemagne. There's no fucking way you yeah. can't. But it was also, again, everything works out and that he picked up so much knowledge from the, of the podcasting world from Brilliant that when he came to me, I'm just some kid who don't know shit, completely wet behind the ears. And whatever you learned from Charlemagne, he brought to me. And now I feel like I've learned a good amount. And now we have this good synergy. Mm -hmm. yeah, plus every comic has a, at least two podcasts. Yeah. And if I end up doing another one, mm -hmm. I'll take that information to the next one. What the vice you were saying, how you know you should incorporate your own brand of comedy in an episode when interviewing someone like you. Uh, what advice do you have for the up-and-coming comedians? Because a lot of people focus on the stand-up aspect, but I, when I interview certain people, they're kind of like, bro, build an online audience and just go from there because that's where the money is and you could sell out whatever you want after. Like, what's your take for the up-and-coming You have to do creator? everything. It's fucking exhausting. And I, I'm realizing, like, as I put this special together, I, I see how tired Andrew is, and I get it now. And I, I, I had this revelation. I was like, there's a difference between being obsessive in thought and obsessive in action. I've been obsessive in thought my whole life. Me too. Obsessive in action is a different... That's what separates good from great. And I can turn... I can go in and out of that. I've had it before. Keeping that going as much as you can is hard. But one thing that will help you do that is you just... If you're younger as a comic, focus on the fucking comedy. Focus on the craft. Be a fucking great comic. But also, focus on the other shit. And the, that's obsessive in action. Is I am going to be exhausted. I'm going to be the best comedian the stand-up I could be, if that's what you love. But I'm also going to explore these other ways to get good content. You don't want to be a great comic who nobody knows about. You That's also don't want to be a massive podcaster who kind of does comedy, but not really, and then people come see you, and they're like, eh, yeah, it's fine, but you can just watch him do his podcast, really. Some some people who are blow up on social media who like do the reels and all the Instagram stuff, the audience that comes to see them might never know good comedy anyway, though, but yeah. You know, you know, you know if you had a good time or not. Com there's comedy aficionados for sure, but in general, I remember Andrew and I were watching a comic that we're friends with, love him, I mean, we were both being a little insecure. We knew he's crushing. And then Andrew, he was doing, like, um, kind of, like, lighter jokes. Like, nothing with any, like, you know, depth to it. And that's fine. It's the, he was great at that. But Andrew was like, I truly believe the audience laughs from a different place when you do jokes that are about shit, that are, like, more substantive. They truly laugh from a different place. And I, I know what he means. When you're up there, you know what the fuck he means. To that I say... So I say that to your point, that means like no matter if you're saying shit with depth and whatever and it's good comedy, whether they're comedy aficionados or not, they know it's good comedy. You don't have to be a TV critic to know Sopranos was good. Well, yeah, I was, yeah, it's coming from because when certain guests that came on Flagrant 2 and they would name some of the comedians and they're all internet comedians. Hmm. Like, but, but some were real, like 85 South Show, they're good comedians too. Fantastic, dude. And so uh, but other people know them from the internet only, but it was just an interesting perspective when someone comes on, you could tell they don't know comedy. Certain people who aren't in the comedy world. Right, right, right. And they'll be like, yeah, I love this guy on Instagram. He's got 2 million followers, blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. you see that front 2 million followers blue check and all the online content, people love that shit. And they're good you know? at their comedy and that's like, okay, they're good at their comedy and they don't have to be great at stand-up. They can still make their money and I, it's, there's no reason to be mad at it. Them being great at comedy and it's you don't realize it till you start doing a little better in this business because it feels like they're all taking from you if you don't have. Yeah. But when you get it, you're like, oh, there's an audience for them and there's an audience for me. Yep. Uh, Let last, them do their thing. Last thing, did you